Okay, we're going to start off by talking about this particular tool right here. This is a, uh, a craft knife uh, brand name. This one's Excel, but the Exacto is the is the famous brand for these craft knives. If you don't have op act act if you don't have access to one of these, you can maybe use a box cutter. The blade comes out. There's a collar on the end and a head. You can see that head is divided up into fours. The blade goes in between these fours, or two of the fours, and you slowly turn the handle. Actually, it'd be better to hold the head and turn the handle. So you turn the handle counterclockwise, that tightens the blade up. So if your blade falls out, that's the problem. This is a razor blade, just like a, a surgeon would use a scalpel to cut you open in an operation. Very, very sharp. It'll cut you if you don't pay attention. So the number one thing is, you always hold above where you're cutting. Don't cut on your mom and dad's ta table or countertop. Have some kind of a piece of wood, or this is a piece of plexiglass. You can see all the cut and scratches on this from years of use in the classroom. That's what our tables would look like. If you don't have access to this, you could use uh, two layers of uh, uh, cardboard. Probably the best bet would be a, a thick magazine like this. You cut on top of a thick magazine, there's no way this blade is going to go through this magazine and onto mom and dad's table or countertop. So, you don't have something like a cutting board. And, you know, you guys, maybe you have a cutting board in the kitchen that you use. This is hard glass ones, a hard plastic ones, a wooden one. Anything so you're not cutting on the surface of your table. Alright, so that's about this. Now, we're going to start off by... Uh, drawing a sketch. Painter sculpture, you're going to start off with a sketch. I've already got my sketch drawn. i got five to seven pieces. There's five in this one. You're going to add a couple extra pieces. And i got one hole. Here's the hole that's going to be in my sculpture. And this triangle piece that you see right here is going through, is sticking through the hole. Uh, I've got another piece that's on here and another piece that's going in a different direction here. These little things right here are the slots. They're interlocking slots and the slot goes in like this, or actually the slots go in another slot, so they interlock. The slots interlock, and we'll show you that in a second. You've got to have a base piece where this piece won't stand up in the ear. So it starts off by drawing a shape. This is what we call a compound geometric shape. You can see where I left the pencil lines in. This is a triangle, this is a triangle, this is a rectangle. Lay those shapes on top of one of them and cut it out. You may be able to draw a geometric you know, shape on your, on your own. So once you have that, that shape drawn out and you've got a configuration, then you need to start to transfer those shapes to a piece of cardboard. Now if you don't have a piece of cardboard at home that is um, uh, the flap, this is the flap from a box. If you don't have corrugated cardboard, corrugated cardboard is this cardboard is three pieces of paper. There's a piece of paper in the middle that's wavy, that's the corrugated part and a hard piece on one side and a hard piece of cardboard on the other side or paper and they're glued together. If you don't have that, you can use a cereal box. And you can see I've, I've got a, a line drawn around here where I'm going to do all my cutting. There's an area drawn in where I'm going to cut a slot. What you use is you use the thickness of a piece of cardboard that, that is the same cardboard and you lay it on top and you draw a line, press down and, lay it, and draw a line on either side and that should give you a slot it's the same thickness as the cardboard. So that's how you get your slots so they, they fit tightly. I've done some pre-cutting on this. So again, always hold above where you're cutting. I'm going to be cutting in this direction and I'm holding above. If you hold anywhere down here and you're cutting and your fingers are in the way of the knife, you're going to take a chance on cutting yourself. Always hold above. You can always move the material around. You can move your cutting board around. You never ever have to be cutting towards your you never ever have to be cutting towards your hand. Don't lift the cardboard up off of the cutting board and use it as a sawing motion. We had a kid stab himself in the thumb and cut the tendon and had to have his thumb in a, uh, stitches and had to have it in a cast for six weeks while it healed up. So leave everything flat on the surface of the cutting board and always pull away from you and have your holding down the, where you're holding down the cardboard above where you're cutting. Now, if the blade is really sharp, you shouldn't have any problem cutting through all three layers of the cardboard. See, that piece came apart. And if you think about it, this piece, 
I might be able to use this piece and this piece in my sculpture. So I'm going to hold on to those pieces instead of throwing them away. These pieces might get used in, in my sculpture. So I'm going to figure out why this piece here is not come undone. So I'm going to go through and go through those cuts again and figure out why. There you go. Something didn't get cut all the way through. All right, so there. Even from the scraps, I've got three pieces here that all are compounded geometric shapes. So I might be able to use those in my sculpture later on. Say if I, I have my original sketch, so that I got five to seven pieces and there's five in here, maybe by the time I get it done, I go, well, hey, maybe I want to put a piece on the top of this one. And, uh, or maybe I want to put a piece over here on top of this one. Well, you have extra pieces that you can use. So save, save your scraps, put them off to the side. You may use them later. So here's my base. This is the part that's going to be sticking up in the air. Okay. So my first thing is to cut this slot. And again, I'm, when I draw that slot on, I drew on either side of that piece of cardboard. So this slot should be the same thickness as that cardboard. Now I didn't make it as long as I have it drawn. And you can see where it's come across on the back. And then I just pull that out. And there it is. You can see it's even narrower here. That will make my slot even tighter. We're going to use uh, this particular piece. You can see where I've drawn the slots a little on the wide side. Again, I'm going to make sure I cut on either side on those lines. I'm going to pull that, pull that out. And we're going to see if this fits into this area here. We're going to try it. It's a little tight. I might have to, I might have to crush. And we're going to push this in. And it's giving me a problem here. I might have to go through and uh, I know this thing will fit. So I'm going to have to cut this slot a little bit thicker. Now you can always go in with a pair of scissors and cut it a little thicker too. But if you're not really measuring your slots to the same thickness as the cardboard, then your slots are going to be loose and they're going to flop around. So when we put these two together, this should allow that cardboard piece to stand. So what you're looking for is this right here. Those two pieces fitting into one another, and that allows it to stand upright. So let me take and uh, uh, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll turn this, we'll turn this card with this uh, cutting board sideways. So this was sitting on your table. It would look like this. So there's that, there's that base piece. You can see all of those are, are the same height, and that's what allows this to stand freestanding on the table. All right. So. That's how this goes together. I have some other, some other pieces. I've pre-cut some slots. I'm going to pull that out. And maybe I don't like this piece there. I'm going to try this piece underneath and put a triangle, a triangle piece there. And I'm going to slide those pieces together. So you can try different things. And maybe I like that look. Maybe I like that look better. And it's probably better to see it. Maybe I like the way this looks better than the other piece. <clears throat> All right. So <clears throat> let's look at let's look at cutting a hole in the piece. Remember from our our design we have this hole so we're going to cut a geometric hole. I'm going to draw in my hole right here. And I'm going to hold above where I'm cutting. I'm going to turn that paper or turn that cardboard and cut the other direction. My hand is always above the area where I'm cutting. I'm never having my hand in the path of the knife. I don't know how much more I can stress this, but you will never cut yourself if you're taking your time and you're holding above where you're cutting. Anytime you're getting close to where you're cutting and your hand's around where you're cutting, that's when you're going to get cut. But if you're down here, there's no way you're going to cut yourself. All right, so we're going to pop that. We're going to pop that little hole out, and we're going to try. Um, we have some extra triangles. We're going to put this. We're going to put this back in as the base. I like the way that looked. So we're going to set that up, and there's our hole. And look what we're going to do. We're just going to slide this piece right into the hole. Now there's a big piece on this side, and there's a big piece on this side. So now when we're looking at it, I might say, oh, I may want to change the directions, and because this is the small part of the triangle. On this side, this is a smaller piece. Maybe I'm going to put the bigger part of the triangle over here, 
and slide it into that hole. So there's there's the starts of our of our sculpture. Now the, the key is you don't want all of the pieces fitting on your main. You don't want here's your your main piece is this piece. You don't want all the pieces sticking on this one piece. So you want it to move over and go to another piece in your sculpture. So you have some variety and some balance. You can put a, a piece in here like this if you wanted to. Well, you can't really see that. So you can try different directions and different designs uh, with, with your geometric shapes. So that basically is planar sculpture. That's our entry level uh, project. And uh, basically, let me see. I'm on one, two, one, two, three, four. I need to put one more piece in here. Uh, I might uh, cut another piece and have it up here on top. But this is four pieces. Be careful and remember, never have your hand in the path, the direction that the knife is going to travel. 